So what if someone's on a budget, what's the kind of the best way and they're just working out of their bedroom? What's the best way to kind of create the best listening environment? Yeah, I gotta tell you this, some um, you know, um IK has got a system called ARC, the ARC three system that it's like a hundred dollars. It's very reasonable to just make sure your room's tuned. Um, they give you a MEMS mic, they give you a mic with the software and you're able to kind of, they tell you where to place and where to measure with a ruler, your position, listening position in the room. And, um, it gives you a, a very, very good, uh, approximation of how things should sound. There's an auto EQ it. And then at that point, uh, you incorporate that in your listening environment, you know? So, so, yeah, remember, so what that's doing, I guess for someone who doesn't know yeah, what tuned room sure. is, it's like listening to how sounds respond in your room and it's applying a, an eq curve so it's creating a more linear what you're hearing is more linear you're not hearing like you're not being tricked basically your ears like if you're if there's a lot of bass leaving your room it would eq a little bass boost so that when you're mixing you're not adding too much bass is that like a good you, you know this stuff pretty good you, you've been you've been uh, taught huh no, I, so, <laughs> I'm not a good teacher yeah no you're absolutely right um it's so important to know that. That's like one of the basic things to know is that you can be tricked very easily. Sound travels quick. And uh, yeah, what this tool does is it, it it basically listens to what your ears are listening to and then makes corrections so that you're not being tricked. What you're listening to is a good representation of what you would hear outside. It's um, It's a pretty good tool. It used to be that You'd have to rent a spectrum analyzer. Gold was one of the biggest companies years ago or buy one for thousands. Um, and then buy a pink, you know, pink noise, which is your measuring stick, equal energy per octave and a special spectrum, you know, analysis microphone to what we call strike the room and make sure the room, uh, you know, is sounding good. Um, there are much more accurate professional ways to go than ARC, but talking about the person working from home, mm -hmm. ARC is an incredible tool. That's one of the biggest problems we really have is uh, consistency in rooms. Uh, the same engineer can go to a different room, use his or her technique, and listen the same way for the moment, and bring it outside and it'd be different because it's so easy to be tricked. Mm -hmm. Sounds traveling so quick within that space that you're not, you can't notice it mm -hmm. until it's too late. Right. So is that, I guess, an adequate step? Or like, what about putting up foam on the walls, right? You see a lot of beginners just kind of throwing up foam on the walls. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's well, what you're supposed to do, right? Yeah. Well, you know, um, if you think about, um, you know, I always tell my students, think about how um, balls, a series of balls in a room would react if I threw a handful of soup balls against the wall. How, would, how manic would they be or how controlled would they be? If I took a big medicine ball and lobbed it into the wall, how many times would that bounce if I took a volleyball and threw it, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you can use the vision of that, of how things would react in your room. And the, and the analogy would be the big medicine ball for low frequency bass, the volleyball for mid frequencies or frequencies in the tone center, and then the super ball for the high frequencies. It gives you an idea of how things react. So use common sense. Too much reflection in a room is going to create too much of the super ball effect. Mm -hmm. Too much absorption in the room is going to create too much of uh, a non-reactive, a non-reflective you know, effect. So a balance. You like to create a nice balance in a room. There's a little reflection, not too much, because depending upon the size of the room, uh, it's like filling up a car with lots of balloons. That Those balloons are no longer going to be circular. They're going to mm -hmm. start to turn shape to conform in that area. Mm -hmm. You know, If you put just a few smaller balloons in a the car, they'll float independently and they will retain their shape. So I'm does, a, it, does it matter where you put then if you put up some absorption, like sound panels mm -hmm. on the wall, like what, that's where great, should you that's start? That's a great question. Um, you have to think, well, now the guns or what's shooting the sound out, which are your speakers, is really key to consider. Um, by putting soundproofing behind the speakers, not nearly as effective, although sometimes necessary, than in the front of where they're throwing. So again, think of, you know, Think of water, another thing beside the ball analogy would be, think of water, if water was shooting out like a cannon out of those speakers, they would go against the first wall they hit, and then they would bounce secondarily, and then mm -hmm. in a third way, in a fourth way. So really using your vision on how sound would look uh, would, be, would be an important way to do it as well. In the end, you can guess whatever you want. I've done scientific room developments and so on and so forth and designs. Um, in the end, when you spectrum analyze, depending upon how much 
frequency boost or cut is necessary to make your room right would be dependent upon uh, how well you put your, you calculated your uh, hard and soft surface application. So if you saw a tremendous dip in frequency, so you had to boost a lot to make it right, mm -hmm. it means you got too much absorption. Okay. If you saw a tremendous boost in your frequency, it would mean there's too much reflection, time to rethink your strategy. Hey, if you got value from this video, feel free to drop a like. If you're looking for a proven step-by-step -step process for consistently producing pro quality music from home, then just grab my free rapid song finishing checklist in the description below. Also, if you're just looking for more tips and tutorials on how to produce pro level music from home, then just check out my playlist or video on the screen right now. All right, have an awesome day and keep creating.